Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the Texas USA 2013 series. The topic is Experiences with Healing Group, presented by Cornelius on the 16th of November 2013 in Austin, Texas, USA. This is session eight. Well, hi guys, welcome to our well, last hour, sort of catch up with you, I guess, when you're all together here. Um, it's been really lovely catching up with all you guys and getting to, I think I've spoken to just about everybody here, so thanks for your company and time. Thank you. Yeah. Um, today I'm just going to talk about, a lot of people have asked me about the healing group that um, I was leading in West, or still are, if it's not there, in Australia. Um, people from, yeah, from Philadelphia and San Diego and here have asked a few questions about it, so I'll just get you all in one time and talk to you a little bit about it. Um, probably in three parts. One part will probably be how I've sort of had a feeling about it or had an interest in healing a little bit, not really realising it much. Um, and then how I become the leader of the group, um, and then how what we've been doing in the group as well. And um, so I suppose at the very, very beginning, um, a lot, I guess a lot of my life I've just been interested in working out how things work. I've always been a curious sort of kid, and just interested in finding out, um, just I don't know if the, how things came to me and how they would work, and how, if you knew how something worked, I figured you could fix it. So I was always interested in learning how to, especially like with my bike was my first thing, how the bike worked and all the cogs and the bearings and everything and I'd pull it all apart and then put it all back together and it would work better. And um, as I grew up, just learning more things about um, just the material things and then as I got into relationships and I started learning about the other things that weren't working so good was my love things. <laughs> there was a lot of hurt inside of me from those and I didn't understand really why and I could see how a little bit learning about as a kid getting sick, how your physical body can get fixed up quite, seem to repair. And so as the other part, the emotional part, I, I seemed to be failing. I couldn't find an answer for it. And I wanted to know how that worked so I knew how to fix it. And so I guess all through my life, I've been searching for just little ways in different times in my life. And I started getting interested in, there is healing modalities I didn't even know there was. And so I started getting interested in them and finding out what those modalities did or how they worked and they, there's nothing concrete in them I found out that actually proved anything or had a base I could find out how they worked. And a lot of times it felt like they were just, they worked for a moment but weren't um, permanent. There was no sort of effect, a full on effect to change things con uh, to a, um, what would you say, permanently I guess, yeah. And so I looked at a lot of different modalities and just didn't find a lot of faith in what I was seeing until I come across actually John, who was talking about the soul, and that really kicked it off for me, like understanding, wow, no one's ever talked about the soul before. And it started making sense about what's going on, how everything reacts to the soul, the soul's reactive to everything, and how it's, the physical body was just a form that it used to express itself in the physical world. And um, that's helped me a lot, just to try and understand a little bit about myself, and then love was a feeling, and the soul was, like, in, like the love was in there. It wasn't just in the physical body in my heart or anything. And so it made a lot of sense. And also learning about God's laws too, how they worked on the soul and how it started making a lot more sense to me about how things can change and how things can be healed. And so I guess that's where my interests come from, um, healing, I guess, in some way. I've been told those things too. That you, like I said the other day, many times I've been told by medium is or medium people that got healing hands and I didn't know what to do with those or what they're for, and I still don't really know yet. It'll come long in time, I'm not in a hurry to go and try things out with them, or because I want to understand how things work. I find it's quite dangerous when I look at all the different modalities, as people seem to be, they seem to be just trying things or failing and not knowing what's the active ingredient in a lot of the things they're doing or what's active energy. And I'm even with a lot of the spirit work, I see people, they're working with spirits, and it seems to some sort of, some, a lot of people seem to be working with spirits and I didn't really know how they got some faith in that too because you've got this one half of the world, more than one half of the world that's afraid of spirits and you've got this other mob of people that are trusting them and I don't know, didn't know what they're trusting and why is there such a, a 
big disparity between the major fear and the distrust. And so I just curious, started getting curious about these people too, these spirits they're talking about. And, and um, I, stood, I didn't know who they were, what they did, and, and how they, people knew them or how they, they contacted them and things like that. So that became a little bit of an investigation as well. But it didn't make any sense by any of the people until I met John again. <laughs> and that started making sense a lot about what spirits were and where they were and what and they were in different conditions as well. And... Um, and how, I didn't know how people knew even what condition they were in, the, what spirits they were connected to, how they knew what condition they were in, who they, how they knew what the spirit was, or how they knew they could trust one and not the one that all the other people were scared of. So there's a lot of questions for me, I guess, in um, that. And I was never really... I never wanted to have, like, like, a spiritual healing. It just didn't feel quite... I don't know, something's just a little bit off for me, I always felt. I was even a friend as a medium. I didn't even get a reading from her for the three years that I knew her. I just didn't, there's just something just not quite right with it. And um, I used to get some, I got some, like, um, I was tried it out once a couple of times with um, some other people. I felt a little bit more, uh, not safe, what's the word, trusting of, I guess. And they were interesting, but I just, um, it wasn't giving me clarification. I just, the something wasn't concrete in all of, all what I'd been shown or, just a feeling inside me. It was just driving me that something's off here in this whole thing. And so during my life, I felt that there was this other thing. I didn't know what this other thing was. And as a, as a type of healing I knew was around, I knew it was possible, but I didn't know where it was or what it was. And it wasn't active on Earth. I could, could feel that. It just wasn't around. And I just wanted to find out what that was. I didn't know how long it was going to take to find out what it was. But that's the one I'd like to use. I felt, and there's nothing I was interested in or attracted to that was around at the time. So that was a little bit of a background. I, mean, I hadn't done anything with that until the healing group come along. Yeah, and that was um, I actually didn't start the healing group. There was a, a few people that had an interest in it and um, put it out there to other people that were interested. And um, I just went and visited, basically, to see what it was like. They invited me to come along, but I missed an email for that and didn't catch up. And then one weekend, eventually, went along just to see what they're up to and what they're doing. And um, went along to that and was sitting around and didn't really know what who was. I was trying to work out who was the leader in the group, and there's no one really I could see was leading. And so I just asked the question: "So, what do you guys do?" And um, I just one lady that was sort of organising it a bit. I uh, said they just usually leave it up to whoever's going to lead on the day sort of thing. I was asking lots of questions about that and just, like um, the different uh, um, condition of love that the different leaders are going to be in. Is that going to affect your group? And I talked to them a bit about that and didn't really understand how that would work and, and asked a lot about... Um, oh, so many things I asked. I can't remember most of the things I asked. But um, just had lots of questions to them. I was just questioning lots of things. Something just didn't feel right in a way. And um, yeah, after a while, I realised I needed to shut up, it felt like. I was just getting this feeling like I'm disrupting this group. I haven't organised this group. I've just come along. And it felt like I'd been invited, but I hadn't... Um, I felt like I needed to shut up after a while. So it felt like they weren't getting on with what they were doing. And, uh, and so I just sat back and just sat, went a bit quiet for a little while. And then um, they said they're going to organise a guy they're going to work on and just do some body work on him. And the guy was sitting right next to me and apparently he had agreed to that. And I just asked him, are you OK with that? Because like, the feeling I had coming from him was he wasn't OK or he felt, like, scared. And he, was, he just said, yeah, I'm OK with it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm um, just feeling, wow, you just don't feel like... You. And I um, just didn't want to be a part of that. And so they went into the room and they're just doing... The ones that wanted to do work on him did some work on him, and um, the ones that didn't, there was a few that didn't, I didn't want to go, so I went outside, and um, another lady that came out as well didn't want to work on him, and she was a medium, so I decided maybe we'd just do some channeling, and we ended up channeling the spirits with the guy, and we're just um, talking to them, there's three guys that have been with him all his life, and we're just having a talk to them about, they were like, controlling a lot of his um, decisions in his life as well, they felt he wasn't capable of them. It wasn't and just talked about how unloving it was, about not allowing his free will to choose what he wants to choose and lots of other things. And they said there's lots of other spirits in there with him as well. 
lots of sort of darker ones as well. And they were okay, these guys were speaking to, and ended up having a good chat with them. And they ended up getting some help to move on themselves. And um, we went back in the room. I did have a feeling I'd like to do something with the guy because I hadn't, knew a little bit about him and his life and some of the issues he was going through. And I felt like I wanted myself and another female there. And there's only one female in that whole group that had a bit of an open heart of love to, inside of her. And so um, we just asked if it's OK if we just try something. And he, he said it was OK. And so just the feeling I had for him, there's, no, there's never been a lot of love from men in his life. He's been, um, all his families treated him like he's nothing. The men in his life, have always, he's never really had a friend, a male friend. Um, and also his mother, there's never been a connection in her heart to, towards him and he just placates a lot to women trying to get love and sells himself a lot. And so I just wanted the, um, the girl, if she was okay and she was okay to come in as well, just to hold a hand over his heart and just I was trying to ask her to feel some love from God through her and just to give him some love, just a little bit of what God's love may feel like from a, a feminine perspective. And myself, I just want, all I wanted to do was just hold his hand. So I just held his hand during that because I wanted him to know that there's a male. Males do care. And just trying to, I was just wanting to feel God's love from a male perspective, just knowing that he's actually cared for and loved. And I um, just did that for a little while. And um, I could feel as he was shut down. So I realised I'll just stop this because he's not wanting to accept it. So I'm not going to go any further with that. Yeah, we just left that off and went in the room and they were all talking about what his experience was. I was giving him all this feedback about his shut downness, <laughs> And um, <laughs> it just seems quite funny now. Because <laughs> a lot of the people in the room were creating the shutdowns in their own spirits around them, expect, expecting to do things on him and not even feeling his condition and not wanting, to him, not, not wanting to give him love but getting their addictions met, doing their process on him and not even wanting to know what his feedback was about how it felt for him. Yes, there's a lot of unloving things going on there. I didn't realise a lot of these. I just felt things were off but didn't know what was going on until after I left and I got to feel things a bit more away from that scene. And um, there was one there... I can't remember everything about... Um, everything after that, but this... I knew I felt yuck about it. Some other people felt yuck about it and didn't really, I didn't really want to... wasn't that interested in going back to their group. And... Um, there's a couple other people that weren't too, and one lady was um, going to leave and send an email out to everybody about why she wasn't going, and her, um, felt she was in addiction and didn't want to be there doing that and stuff like that. And um, then AJ had a talk with the whole group. He sent an email out, which is really good, pointing out a whole lot of things about that, and uh, suggesting that the, um, there was somebody in your group that was and a bit, always look for the best condition of love person in that group, and that person should lead your group, and it was suggested that it was somebody, and that was me, <laughs> so, in the end. Um, and there's a choice up to me then, too, what I wanted to do about that, because I was happy to walk away and just leave them, they've set the group up, and it's theirs. Um, there's a choice to either just walk away and let them have their group and do what they're doing sort of thing, or a choice to um, stand up for love and truth, and and wanting to not as others to be hurt by any more of their actions and trying to get things on track of what it was originally should have been designed for because a lot of good can come out of it. And so um, I took on that challenge. <laughs> I was um, quite nervous about it. So I feel it's just a very big responsibility to um, want to be able to assist somebody. It's not a thing to play with. Um, it's someone's life really and I feel it is anyway and it can from what you do can take a damaging point from their life so need to really know a lot of the um, foundations I guess of love have to be in place before I feel before you start interacting that's what I feel myself I don't want to do that until I have a lot more um, faith in God's love inside of me to be able to help people and that's the love I'm aiming for too is by the way is not love from spirits but I would like God's love to be doing the healing. It's one of the most powerful loves in the universe. Why would you bother with the spirit's love? Yeah. And so that's sort of where things are at to that point. And I set up some guidelines too for the group. Um, so I wanted to know the people that come along. I wanted to know that um, um, what, what things were okay and what things weren't okay. 
and I might read them to you if you're interested. Are they interested? Okay, yeah. So I sent up this for them, I sent them that. I uh, read it. Uh, every time someone new comes along to the group, I also give this to them as well. And anybody that's interested, I also give this to them as well so they can make a choice on if they'd like to be part of the group or not. So, so I sent um, them this. Firstly, that we have to let go of the idea that we're healers, that is the quality of love that does the healing, both inside our own souls and from the spirits that we become in rapport with, which is also due to the development of the quality of love we possess at the time. So the development of love within our own soul is paramount. Secondly, this group needs to establish the same foundations as a path that God requires, which is humility, truth and love. This is also paramount. Given that God's love is the greatest love in the universe, this is the love with the greatest healing potential and the one that is the focus. As it's a soul-based love, the development of the soul is the only way to obtain it, and hence the first point. Thirdly, that if anyone at present has any unresolved issues with anyone else in the group, that they need to resolve that issue as soon as possible in a loving manner with that other person before they come to a meeting. It's... It is selfish and unloving and total addiction to take from the group and to expect others to sit in a room and have to hear, to have to bear with two other people that have an undercurrent of ill feelings going out towards each other, which others in the room also have to bear because of the person's choosing a state of fear and not love for each other. Not to mention the darker spirits that also accompany them and this will not be tolerated in the groups. Fourthly, we'll be encouraging people to connect with all feelings that come up for themselves in this environment and to speak up when something doesn't feel right. Constant resistiveness and any anger whatsoever towards anyone else in the group with feedback in order to pull someone else down will not be tolerated and that person will be asked to leave. Fifthly, this will not be a group to sort out your problems. You'll need to take responsibility for whatever comes up for you. I think that's all I wrote is there something I wrote in my diary after that, so I won't read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Is this on? Is this, yeah. yeah, it's on. Um, could you just do a, a brief couple words for each of those five things, just on the, on the board behind? I can just send them to you, if you'd like. Okay. It'd be easier. Yeah. Okay. So you can keep those. For any group you should be establishing, you'll need those sort of foundations anyway. So, yeah. They're the same foundations that you've been taught from AJ for the last five years or more. Yeah, it's just, and they're like a set of, it's a guideline you need to take through your life no matter what situation you're going to be in. So, yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> That's what he's been teaching. Yeah. Yeah, and so, any more questions about that at all? We we'll move on. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> um, where did I get to, yeah. So I sh shared that with the group. I decided to take leadership if they were all okay with it too. I just needed to make sure they were all okay with it. And we set out from there. And the first thing we really need to sort out was ourselves. We are the pr biggest problem. <laughs> and there's no point giving our problem to another person, which might be in a better condition to start with before we come along and attempt to do something that we think is good and it's not. And there's a lot of healers that do have so many addictions they're doing a lot of damage to people, feeling like they're doing a lot of good, but they're actually doing a lot of harm. And so the first thing we need to start looking at was our own addictions in our own lives that affect us and our environment and people we're actually interacting with every single day. And so that was our first start, and that's pretty much we're going to be on that for a while. And um, we've been doing some exercises and things about that as well. And looking at also if we're going to be connecting with God in this process to what's affecting us with the relationship with God and our guides as too, which God has assigned for us, why aren't we connecting with them as well? So we did lots of little things. I could share some of those if you like as well, some little exercises we did. All right, I'll have to get the paper out because there's lots of them. <laughs> um, one of the exercises we did too was just to... Um, just got people just to sort of... I just wanted to gauge what their feelings were about God, to so just ask them just for a moment, just sit and we'll just pray for a moment and so you gave me a few minutes to do that and I um, just wanted to see, just ask them the question, what happened when you tried to pray and just to see what feelings come up and if you, if you like feeling like they were blocked or whether they actually did have feelings of wanting to receive some of God's love or have some sort of relationship or talk with God and a lot of times we noticed there was things coming out that blocked us straight away and so we started to notice that they were the most important things to probably work on for the start and, and look at those blocks firstly what comes up. Um, 
we talked about too, um, if our connection with God isn't there and our connection with our soulmate isn't there or someone we're in a relationship with, um, and we're not, which is not love coming from God, is not love coming from our spirit gods as well. We don't feel love from an, a partner. We just ask the question, where is our love coming from? What do we get our love from? And, and found out it was a lot of our addictions, <laughs> you know, to trying to cover up the, all the fears we have in our day. Um, and to start taking note in our daily interactions what was happening between our interactions with people, like what thing, and trying to better our condition, like taking note of where you've been unloving, and when there's little bits, just little pangs of anger, annoyance coming up, notice that you're just trying to avoid some fear in that moment as well. Something just happened, and you go back to it, and just try and take stock of your own emotion, knowing it rather than just walking away from it or trying to cover it up with something else. And to, and to do that every, like, every single day, every single moment, not just in the group, not just outside of your relationship, everywhere. Um, sometimes they come in too, I feel that I felt really heavy, and I take them all back outside again <laughs> and just get them to stretch for a start and to get them to feel their bodies and start feeling like the soreness in their bodies, like stretching the positions they usually don't get into and um, just trying to get them to connect with their bodies more in their life because the bodies are... Well, in my curiosity of learnings about healing years ago, I realised that there's, um, this, the physical body I started noticing was like, it's almost like the last chance you get. <laughs> it was giving your body's already, something already affecting your body, and the last warning you're going to get if you haven't picked it up already is going to be your body. And if, and if it gets to that point, you're on strike three after that. Yeah. That's something I noticed on my little wanderings in my mind <laughs> you know, years ago. So I was trying to get them to connect with their bodies as well and notice what goes on in your body. Notice, like, we're so used to just pushing our pains away, like our emotional pains. We have all different mechanisms to do that. So I was trying to get them to get back in touch with their body and the movements that they do. And getting, like, I find yoga is really good for that. You're getting really uncomfortable positions and notice things that weren't there before and different points and... Any sort of movement's good. We've got them to do just some walking exercise and breathing in particular. A lot of times there's fears block, like the shallow breathing because of our own fear. Gets our breath so short. We're just getting, yeah, so we're getting in touch in that way. Um, there's a few of the people there that, that set up the healing group previously and actually, we're doing it in an um, environment that was set up. They actually rented the space for, um, they called it soul healing. I don't know what it was, but they called it soul healing. And because there's a few people that are already practicing in the, in, in the community doing healing work, I, um, I had an exercise with them and for feedback if they're okay with that, and suddenly if they're okay as well, which all of them were, which was good. <laughs> and um, there's a que- I got everybody to ask, I asked a question to the healer, to, to everybody else, would you get a healing from this person? And what do you feel coming from them? Why would you or would you not go to that person? And they were able, which is good, we all gave feedback, our honest feelings towards that person, as honest as most people could get, I think, without being in addiction. We're trying to placate them and make them feel good, but it was quite good because it confronted a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of truth. I was actually surprised. I got quite honest to people, which is good. And we just kept going around to each healer to see if you get a healing from that person, what issues you felt you wouldn't want to go to them for, just so they'd know what was coming from them what people could feel, and oftentimes they didn't know that those feelings were coming from the people. Yeah. Um, these are all in brief, by the way, they're far more expanded when we're doing them. <laughs> um, and we did the same thing with people as well, we decided to sit down and ask, um, we also talked about what sort of healing modalities or styles or interests or uh, passions we had towards what we'd like to do as well in the future, and what things we felt in our own life were affecting them at the moment. And I've um, got others as well, just to point out anything we could see in any other person in the group that they had noticed about some addictions they'd noticed in what their, their actions or their interactions with them or interactions they'd seen with others as well, which is quite illuminating as well. It's quite good. Um, it's quite difficult too. There's a lot of fear coming up trying to say some things as well for myself, especially because also being a leader of a group too, I'm going to attract either the men I've attracted are all pretty much have the similar injuries to me. All the women I've attracted are all the ones that I'm scared about women about. <laughs> so it's been really good doing that, confronting a lot of the women not 
that in the getaway of things I generally want to just pander to <laughs> and have to say things and feel really horrible about saying it, but no one I needed to say because that's what it felt was the truth. And to their credit, they're actually okay most times with accepting. A lot of the guys are just they're in a similar condition of um, pandering to women's emotions as well and pretty much selling their own will to, to a woman to try and get love from them and through all their different addictions as well, to different degrees as well. Some almost have completely given away their will to the woman. There's lots of different injuries you pointed out between the two um, sexes in the group as well. Um, there's a whole lot of things I'm soon missing out here. Um, yeah, different. We're talking about how they are different emotions are going to affect if we're doing any work on a person. How well we've, we're carrying a certain damaged emotion, how it's going to affect another love. Firstly, from being able, and that's what we want to use as the healing tool. Love is not and um, not um, anything that we want from the healing. It's got to be a giving, a giving of love to the person, a genuine feeling from your heart to want to help them, and want to heal, um, give them what you can and be open to what they're feeling as well and what they're, and any feeling that's coming back to stop, you know when something's off. In the group, I've said that to anything you feel in this group, even with me, tell me if something feels off. Pull me up any time you like. Pull anybody up any time you like. I want to hear everybody's voice because I realised that was one of my issues when I first went in that group. I didn't want to speak up when I needed to keep speaking, really. And then some things happened in that, like with the the body work on that guy, I felt like a, I felt pretty terrible. I didn't protect him, and I could have, just by speaking up, because the feeling was in me, but I didn't speak up. Yeah. And that sort of drove me, I guess, in a way, to want to lead the group and take it into a better place. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of... Um, AJ sent some really good passages from the pageant message that we've been discussing for a little while. And um, a lot of spirits actually come and... Was, they're interested now. We had lots of children coming, sitting on the floor one day. They just love it like story time. <laughs> we had some spirits coming. They were quite frustrated because we couldn't work it out for them because <laughs> we were still trying to go through it ourselves. And this, this healing I'm talking about too is um, using God's love as a healing method. It's only been on earth for a very, very, very short time in history of man. That was in the first century after... Us guys disappeared, and some of the people that are still around were still using that method until it got faded out as well and lost because people lost connection with God and the faith in what God's power can do, what God's love can do through and through people and how they can heal a person through that. So I want to, we want to bring that back to earth. And I want to do it this way and slowly. I don't want to, not in a hurry. I don't care if it takes however long even if it's just before I get old and grey or I'm already there, so like um, maybe a little bit further down the track. Um, yeah, I'd like to see that happen. And I'm not in a hurry, so we'll just take it slow and learn things slowly. So the Spirit, just letting them know they be patient, <laughs> the ones that were hanging around. But there's two, pa uh, two passages, if you'd like to write them down, or two was one of them, the pageant message was um, in 1916. There's a message from Jesus on this. I'll write it up here for you, even easier. The 16th of May. That's quite a good one. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, 16th of May. 1916. It was by Jesus. And there's another one also by Francis Bacon on the 20th of November 1918 and that was Francis Bacon we had quite a bit of a talk about those there's some good information in that and one we still don't really get from yours truly there um, I invited AJ to the group at some stage too when we get a chance um, and the group I have to ask the group if they're interested in it first because it's all of them and they're interested, very interested in having him come along and just talk to us a little bit about um, when God's love does come through us and is able to work its magic, <laughs> if you want to call it, it's, it's um, healing um, on a person. There's a, 
something I still haven't got onto it. I love it because it's kind of there, but it's not there. Um, it's a, a substance or something that comes from the physical body that's unique in the healing compared to it from a spirit working through a person. There's something in... Oh, you're probably giggling yourself up there. Oh, I don't know exactly what that is. <laughs> it's coming through... That person being in physical form, receiving God's love to, and being able to interact with a, um, another person in the physical form is unique in its healing ability. And it's something to do with the ectoplasm in that it's able to heal the person, whereas a spirit in the spirit world going through a physical body, it doesn't work like that. And um, it's quite different. I don't understand it yet, so I'm just letting you know where I'm at with that one. Yeah, but I'm quite excited about it too and how it's operational as well. And there's some laws involved in that I don't understand just yet, so looking forward to finding those out. Um, yeah, we're talking, we're doing those, talking about those messages, and when we're talking about this one with Francis Bacon, I noticed with the group, I talked to him about it the next time I was there, that um, because he was, he was talking more in like a new age sort of term or more um, natural love language, I guess, and I felt this... Um, judgment of a lot of the people in the group about that, when, uh, about his message wasn't as valid as this one. And so I talked to them about that, about their judgment is going to prevent them from feeling what the message is and what's involved in it and the depth of it. And their judgment about like someone, a celestial spirit has more to offer than a, a natural life spirit, and that's just not true. They're missing the actual love in the messages. And to keep that in mind with you guys too, and any interaction with anybody... Your judgment's going to let you miss out on many, many things and, pre- and prevent your progress. Yeah. So we had a good talk about that one with them about that. A lot of them didn't even feel that I was judging and they said, yeah, you were. I felt it from a lot of you. And so I realised, wow, this group really just doesn't feel. They can't feel and it's going to be a big impediment to this whole group. And so I talked to them about that, about not feeling a person or a feeling um, they can't register love. And so next time I was with the group, did an exercise um, where I got, um, did two people at once, this was a bigger group, and got the rest of the people to line up in a line. And I got one person that was blindfolded to, and I picked a person out in the group they had to find by feeling them. So they couldn't use their senses, their sight senses, and their no hearing senses because we're all quiet. And um, so just moved them along the line. I, I stood back quite a way too so I could... I realised I needed to stand back because I felt like I didn't want my energy affecting them as well. And so I just told them to move along, move along, move along. And just when you think you found the person, just say so. And a lot of times I got right through the line. And so that was the end if you wanted to choose someone along that you felt might have been. And they go back and choose that person and take the blindfold off. And I think it's only one person that actually got the person. But it wasn't about getting it right. It was about trying to feel, trying to connect with your senses, your um, soul senses, about what, feeling the people that they've been interacting with all the time, yet they don't even know them. They can't feel them. This is what I'm trying to um, explain to them, that there's a, there's, we don't use these senses very much. We seem to shut them down and just rely on our very base earthly senses. And we need to be starting to trust these ones. If we can't start feeling these ones, we can't connect with God, we can't connect with our soulmate, we can't connect with our guides, all the help that's available to us. So we need to start connecting with those. And it was a good exercise that they started realising how they just didn't feel, they weren't connected to themselves. And that's why I said, this is why we're doing a lot of the work on addictions, because we need to start connecting to our own feelings first. Then we can be, when we become sensitive to them, we'll become sensitive to others. And that's the only way we're going to be able to heal people is by being sensitive to our own first. Because you can, once you've worked through some things in your own, that can, once you've worked through some of your own issues and come out of that issue, you know what the issue was and what the feelings were involved in that, and then you can see it. In, you can start to pick it up in others. Then, but before you haven't picked it up in yourself, you're not going to feel it in others. So you're not going to know what's going on in their life or within their their feelings as well. Yeah, and that's. We need to become sensitive of our own first and then we'll become sensitive of others. Yeah. Another thing we're talking about too is um, Google Maps. Um, we're talking about um, self-attack. I had a period where I didn't... I just, when, when I'm doing the groups too, there's not like a set date all the time. Um, when I feel like doing a group is leading it, I'll do it when I feel like doing it. 
when there's a passion in me to want to do it. So I'm not going to go there just because the calendar says what data should do it on and feed people's addictions of coming to a group everywhere, every so often. Also, too, with groups, I haven't realised until this weekend why I've been really against, I've been really sort of, I don't like groups. And it's because I realised it's not so much the groups or the people, it's the addictions in the groups that I've never liked. How people get a group mentality and what's driven them there most of the time is the addictions. And it's, into, it's, it's playing out in the groups and I haven't liked that feeling. So I've been sort of staying away or in the background of groups and just staying on the edge. But now I can see that they can be effective as long as we start working on the addictions that are in the group. And it can be very effective, they can be. So I'm glad I learned that this weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of spirit attack is going to happen, <laughs> it feels like, and need to be start to becoming aware of when it's happening to us as well. And um, I was getting attacked quite a bit between one group and the next one. It shouldn't happen for another three months later, I think, it's the next group I had. And um, I was just playing with some of the different feelings inside myself of what was happening during attacks and what, was, what I was doing and shutting down, how I was shutting down and numbing out and doing all sorts of nothings really just about it felt like and feeling like crap really and feeling crap because my progr- I wasn't progressing and getting all just really hard on myself until I realised what I was doing after a while. And um, I remember just being outside walking somewhere and just wondered what it would feel like to just feel what God felt about me in that moment and I just and it was just a completely different feeling that passed through me. I just lost it and fell on the ground and just cried and cried and thought, wow. And I realised too that, wow, when I'm doing that to myself, like hating myself or being hard on myself, it's giving a green light to the spirits to say, yeah, we can attack you because you can attack you. You're saying it's okay, so we can come in too. I just realised I was giving the green light to spirits by wanting to be hard on myself. And for a moment, I just started to feel, wow, if I can project that anger on myself, I can also project love at myself if I try to. I wonder if that works. And I tried just um, feeling what it would be like to be compassionate to my own condition. And I just lost it again. <laughs> it was another day, but just really, I uh, didn't realise I could do that as well. Yeah, and it softened me down to actually let me feel some of the fear that I was avoiding way back when I started shutting myself down. Yeah, I was quite surprised that that was actually possible. I realised, wow, if I'm projecting all this negative feelings onto my own soul, what am I doing to the other half of my soul too? It's just I'm projecting that onto her as well. She's half of me. And I realised, oh, this is not good. <laughs> and so I realised I needed to do a lot more about the way I treat myself and what's causing me to treat myself that way. And there's a, actually, I end up randomly, it never is random, I opened up passage messages on my random opening a page anywhere and I opened up a page that was... Um, I can't remember what was on it now, but it was along those lines. I thought it was just so pertinent. It's the only time I actually just lost it crying from the pageant messages then, too. It was about, um, it was about self-love, I think, too, in that passage. And I'll write that, what it's down, what it was as well, if you like. Um, it was on the 9th of July. It was in the year of 1916. And... Jesus wrote that one. Yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing, I guess. I think that's about the last meeting we had. Um, Also, with a lot of times, too, when if you're not, I was talking about, too, opening yourself up first, if you're ever going to try and do anything on anybody, heal them, or trying to do some work on them. If you've got a feeling inside yourself, I don't want to cry, I don't want to cry, and you're trying to do work on someone, you're projecting that at the person as well, and it's shutting them down from having an experience of crying, because you're going to feel the judgment coming from your own soul, and also the anger if they even start to even think about crying. It's a lot of our own, it's never going to work, that sort of healing, unless we fix ourselves up in those areas. So That's been our goal so far is just working through the addictions and keeping on, I'm going to keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on going on those until we do a lot of other work. Yeah, I don't think we're doing any sort of healing on people for a long time. Yeah. Just want to just get people more in touch with themselves and when I can start to feel they're getting in touch with themselves then we'll move on to something else perhaps. So that's it. Thanks guys. Thanks for your time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, do we have any questions? <laughs> Mary, you had your hand up first. Yeah. I was just wondering, Corny, about the response that... I haven't been to the group, so the response of the people in the group when you sort of said, um, we're not actually going to do any healing now. Yeah. Um, yeah, cut a lot of addictions out. Like you yeah, could feel like, they... what? <laughs> we're healers, that's what we do, sort of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of um, getting their needs, their, their good feelings about being a healer met through those purposes. Yeah, and you could feel that like there was a lot of resistance from them. Yeah, I, I explained to them there's no point doing stuff like that at this stage. I don't want to do the stuff at this stage. If you don't want to be here, that's okay, but this is what we're going to be doing because it's far more important need to get our love right first before we start doing anything else. Yes, yeah, so that was one they had to deal with as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just imagining that, that yeah. it would have been quite confronting because yeah. people often come to a group, don't they, and think we're going to do this yeah. and then when you take that away... Yeah, I'm not getting strange. it all met. Yeah, yeah. To their credit, I think most of the people still came along still. <laughs> yeah. yeah, There's been some new ones come along as well. So. Okay. And there's been a bit of interest in it as well too. So I, I think sometimes... If the people are coming along are genuine, then the interest, we must be working in the right direction if we're attracting more people mm -hmm. that do have a genuine interest just to want to come along and learn and not have to do, want to do healings and things. Mm -hmm. Some have actually had emails from that wanted to come along and take from the group. I felt that from them and asked them their intention of wanting to join the group in the first place or come along and they just wanted to get stuff from the group and said, no, there's no point coming along to you sort that out. So how did you assess... What do you mean they wanted to get stuff? How did you... One, I asked him what the intentions with one person. He just said, oh, I was hoping to get a healing from the people in the group. And okay. said, no, we don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, one here. Yeah, I wanted to know about... Um, learning more about this or participating remotely or do you post... Things, conclusions um, from the groups? I or? sort of thought about that and felt it's a bit awkward, kind of. Okay. Unless it's all videotaped and everything and streamed, but yeah. um, we may even do that in the future. Okay. But at the moment, I've just right. been, because I'm sort of new to it all myself. Sure, um, sure, sure. Just feel like I'm sometimes flailing my way through it and sure, sure. when things come up, they come up. And yeah, no, it feels like a huge. Yeah. I've been praying about this actually. Yeah. So, what you're talking about. It feels like creating something yeah. actually and yeah. not really knowing what the next step's going to be. Yeah. yeah, and then it'll eventually something will come Great. up and then go with that step. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing. You've responded to a big desire just by sharing this. So That's right. Okay. I am sending out um, just a brief um, the minutes of the meeting, if you want to call yeah. that, just yeah. been writing that down yeah. and sending them out to anybody that wasn't there in the group on a mailing yeah. list we had. Would that so. be possible? Yeah, if you like. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. That's okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, anybody else have questions? Yes, I. So the people in the group are just general people out of the population, not from the, you know, the DLP group? No, or they're mostly whatever. LDLP they're just, so far, so... They're just people from the community? Well, the one that they live around the area, but they do, a lot of all the people are from, have heard the Divine Love okay. teachings, yeah. So far, hopefully we get some others that haven't, which would be really, really nice. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, sorry, Boris. <laughs> Uh, my question is, as far as you know, what's the process of the, the healing that comes from God through, for, through a person? Like maybe, like it would, I guess, temporarily raise the soul condition of the person through the person's own openness and then it would connect with some of the grief that you're holding on. And I don't know, something that you um, can explain. I don't know exactly yet. It's like yeah. I'm still learning about that one and how it works. Mm -hmm. um, well, obviously, nobody's got to remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, it takes a, lot, it takes a, a great amount of faith mm -hmm. that God's love will, is that sort of love as well for not only the person that's um, wanting to help a person on earth and, but also from the person who's going to receive it as well it's the faith that's going to make it active yeah. that's probably all I could tell you at the moment about it yeah. I do have a little feeling about how it works in some way it's not going to... Um, it's not there to take away your injuries because that would be ineffectual. It's not helping you learn anything about yourself. You still have to go through the same process you're going through now. It feels like to me, and as I think this is just one aspect of it, 
that um, if this, say like a child has been born with a, some sort of physical defect in their body and um, which hasn't been any cause of their own, it's just been because of their parents' condition that's created a defect in the child when it was born, it, um, there's a, uh, the healing will be able to work on that, little, that, that child or that person to actually help their form fix up so they can have a full experience in life. Yeah. And they're still responsible for their choices, once again, whatever they do with that life too. But it allows, them, it allows fixing something that wasn't any of their cause. Yeah. So would it be more ethical to start uh, healing children before, before adults? Like, um, depending if it's like if the if it is an, ad, an adult that's grown up from a child state and the same thing, yeah. like if they've had blindness all their life, you could help fix their blindness, they could actually have an experience of sight. Yeah, it's not so much, um, it's always going to be ethical no matter how you do it. Yeah, yeah but it's not uh, limited to child or adult. That's all right. Uh, yes, Gabriella. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have this uh, image though like when you receive divine love wouldn't you expect while you're healing to be overwhelmed with emotion during the process generally yeah the people are so, imagine, imagine the gift so of that, having that so exactly yeah. that is something that just blows me away mm. so I uh, you had said something about before about interfering with the other person's emotion so or animal <laughs> Uh, or I don't know if it goes on the plants, but um, so if you're experiencing this and you're overwhelmed, but you're owning your emotion, is that in any way interfering? The with person will be overwhelmed. The not, one that's not yourself, generally. The healer is feeling overwhelmed from receiving this as well. Or not no? overwhelmed, no. It's usually I, I, have, I don't know because I haven't got to that stage. Right. But my feeling about it is that um, it won't be like. Um, not in a painful it's way. It's not you're, yeah. you're not so much going through your own emotions. You've already had a good connection with God and a, a quite a bit of the, um, God's love inside yourself. Yes. So you know the feeling of it passing through you. Mm -hmm. You'll have a very lovely feeling to the, towards the person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But you yourself is the healer. I mean, right as where I'm and sitting. It will feel in my lovely. condition, <laughs> in my condition yeah. right now, I mm. would feel any time you know, feeling divine love. It's mm. just you're overwhelmed with tears, and and, and emotion. So. Are you talking about getting to a point where this wouldn't occur while you're channeling, or I guess that's the word, God's love? Probably not as great in that way. You're really yeah. in a better condition. It, um, I don't know really, if my question makes sense. It just, just I feel like right now, like whenever you're if in, I were to have that possibility, I'd just start crying if I had that healing. When you start to become in harmony with God's laws, you'll start feeling that all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you come in harmony with God's laws, everything feels a lot better and right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that stage, it's not won't be so. I don't feel it'll be in that, such an overwhelming. You just know that things are in okay. fix and if, so it'll just pass more easily through you. Without you'll be able to such an, uh, You'll be able to focus on what you're wanting to give to the person. Okay. May, afterwards, you might feel a real feeling about it and just, just so overwhelmed with the beautiful gift that's just been given. Yeah. 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 But during it, yeah. no, I don't feel so. Just okay. Yeah. All right. It's if you're very focused on wanting to give in that state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's okay. I could tell you about that in the future when it happens. Okay, <laughs> yeah. At the cool. moment, that's right. what I feel about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I was going to laugh and say, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're running backwards and forwards. <laughs> yeah. What we can do now then, if we have kind of a passion for healing, is um, really just focus and work on ourselves and our addictions and, and then maybe get the minutes from you and progress that way yep. until things start taking effect. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And trying to heal yourself first. That's yeah, what you have to do first. first. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Enrique? Um, I always wondered about as far as health, that there's, I, I learned about, you know, the emotions, and then you're saying this is another way where God's love flows through another person. But I've always wondered how, like, there seems to be so many natural things to already heal, and you can not necessarily deal with an emotion, but plants and water and healthy food and all those things contribute so much to your health. Mm -hmm. 
and it seems like God already placed those here. Yeah. So you can use things in the physical, and I guess I always wondered about the... Yeah, that's true. There's like, well, there's three parts of us, isn't there? There's our physical body, our spirit body, and our soul. And a lot of the things on the planet can have a good effect on our physical body to a degree. But we've got to remember that the soul is the active one that mobilises all these things. It mobilises the spirit body, it mobilises the physical body. So that would be the best one to sort of take care of the most, wouldn't it? Okay, so... Is that what if, you mean, or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you know, if you do the physical, it'll, it'll just come back. Yeah, if the soul's not getting fixed up, the physical's just going to find another a spot to be... Like, it'll come out somewhere else in the body, the injury. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Anybody else? Or I'll finish up my closing thing like I did a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>